A very warm welcome to one and all who have here. Let us begin today's program with an invocation. We request all of you to raise for our college prayer. Satyamuratam Satyaparam Trisatyam Satyasya Yonim Nihitam Chasatye Satyasya Satyam Ruta Satyanetrum Satyatmakam Twam Charanam Prapanaha वाणी गुणानु कथने श्रवणो कथायाम हस्तो च कर्मसु मनस्तव पादयोर्नह कृत्याम सिरस्तव निवास जगत प्रणामे दृष्टिस्ततां दर्शने सुभवत्तनूनां नमो भगवते तस्मै कृष्णायाद्भुत कर्मने रूपनाम विभेदेन रूपनाम विभेदेन जगत क्रीडति योयतः ओम शांति 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 We are glad to welcome you all to this program Triple Helix and the Prad Genius to celebrate the birth century of Professor G N Ramachandran We are proud to have today's speaker Dr Sarat Kumar Das Dean Balakrishnan Institute Chair, Professor at IIT Madras. We welcome you, sir. It is my pleasure to welcome our principal. We are happy to have your presence today, sir. We are grateful to invite the head of other departments, teaching and non-teaching staffs to this event, and we are happy to have our students for this talk. We are we invite the enthusiastic students who has participated and won in the essay writing competition. Now I would like to call our principal. to give a special address good morning good morning everyone welcome to the chief guest of our program professor sarath kumar das the balakrishna institute chair professor of iit madras and also a syndicate member of the university of madras welcome you sir and as part of this today's program dr utra hichori of the physics and his team have 
made a wonderful arrangement with the, with the department who select, as part of Asati Amrito Department of Science and Technology Government of India, which is celebrating his 100th birthday of Professor G. N. Ramachandran and Professor Naidoma and Dr. Laga, who are the greatest scientists of our country. They are all contributed to the growth of the science and technology and work for technology for common man also. I pronounce to them. Incidentally, they all did the research from Madras and Madras group made the big waves internationally regarding the research. And uh, Professor GNR was a student of uh, Sir C. V. Raman. He, he too must have been awarded Nobel Prize for his discovery. They have a triple helix structure of collagen through X-ray cryptography systems, but unfortunately he did not. Though, though he is not getting, his name is there. So what world is using this discovery? It is used every day in every pharmaceutical biochemistry, biotechnology industry and is saving millions of lives. And every tablet or medicine is designed using this technique, so they act effectively and cure diseases. And here and your young generation, you should know about uh, the uh, research output of these great scientists. That's why we are here to celebrate this birthday. And apart from that, you know very well that Dwarandas, Gorandas, Vaishnava College is uh, uh, doing uh, women's service uh, to the society through various departments. One of the departments is physics department, where recently we have renovated the whole physics department and we had a separate uh, space for STEM, it's called a STEM lab. And I am very happy to note that the few students have used the STEM lab to showcase their creativity in the field of science and a lot of uh, workshop is going on there. In spite of that, we are planning to have more uh, research in the field of STEM and also we have provided idea turn, we have created a place for uh, uh, to get, get an idea from the students towards uh, the uh, development of the uh, science uh, research. For that, the head of the department, Uttara, has taken charge and uh, he is working on it and we will be getting the um, experts uh, from outside and also we will be getting the advice from the professor like who is sitting in, in front of you from IIT and other people to benefit the students community. For the students are the futures of India, you know very well that. Basic science is uh, uh, recently it is coming down and more attraction is not for basic science. People started going to the applications of science only. Without knowing the science, you could not go for applications. Like applications like computer science or uh, artificial intelligence, data science, whatever may be. It is only an application of basic science. But for all these, for all these applications, the most important uh, thing is the student or the person should be strong in basic science where it consists of max, physics and uh, chemistry. And if you want to go for uh, other things, botany and uh, zoology will play some role for basic science. But when you come, when you see the in-depth about the application side, wherever you go, there you will have mathematics, where there will be an invention, there will be a domain. So domain knowledge is very important. When you want to work with the medical image processing, you should know about the physics also. When you want to work with uh, bone, uh, bone recognition using X-ray technology, you should know about X-ray, then only you can write coding on particular uh, things. So without knowing that, now the students student start uh, doing these things. But because of the present uh, new education policy, uh, autonomous co colleges like, uh, like us, we have an option where in which we can do physics for three years and fourth year we can do computer science so that you can apply your uh, physics knowledge in the application side so that you can compete with the outside world. So because of the new trend and the other things, uh, the government also have come out with, the central government also have come out with this. Even the state government is, is opposing only two points in that and they also started uh, implementing the NEPs indirectly and knowingly or unknowingly we are also going to implement it because of uh, the, the autonomy status where and the requirement of the parents and the requirement of the industry is also is on par with, uh, the, um, with the content given the NEP. So only we are opposing two things like exams in third standard, fifth standard, eighth standard etc. Then any new things, even our state government, government of Tamil Nadu is accepting and they are doing it. 
and we are taking to the next level. And as far as UGC is concerned, they have given, I'm very happy to announce in this August body, the UGC have given an extension of autonomy for us for another 10 years. <laughs> Yesterday we got a letter from the UGC, and where the UGC have given the extension to us for another 10 years, that is the very, um, very appealing one, where we, we are having a NAC, you know that recently we got in NAC A++, with 10,000 students, with 400 students, getting score of 3.54 is not an easy job. When the volume increases, automatically we have to work, we have to prepare a lot of documents, we have to send a lot of things for the DVD, and we have to um, showcase all the things to the expert committee. Then only we can get this mark. It is not like, just like that, we could not get a mark in that. In that also, they awarded 3.44, we went for an appeal and we got it 3.54, which shows the workmanship of the faculty members and also the support of the students and the management. So that is also important. Because of the NAC A++, automatically the UGC have kept our UGC visit, autonomous visit in the board on 10th, uh, on 3rd, 3rd October they put it in the things and on 10th they announced for another 10 years. So autonomy is with us for up to 2029, uh, sorry, NAC will be with us for up to 2029 and the autonomy will be with us for 2032, 2032. But in meantime, we are going to progress, even in the coming days, we are going to have uh, various uh, meetings with the management committees. And management also is very much interested in taking the college to the next level. So now we have to go to stabilize, stabilize the institution in such a way that providing good facilities for the students uh, who is doing their courses, by in terms of giving more value added courses, uh, more MOUs and participating the students, making the uh, students to participate in the various um, competition conducted by the state government and central government, like that we have a lot of funds for which the physics department with 150 students, with one plus the four faculties, they are doing a wonderful job. They are compete, they have to compete. They have to compete with the research department like chemistry, research department with, like the commerce. In spite of all this competition, the department is able to do very successfully in our college on the name of the college, the outside world and for that we are getting a lot of uh, recognition also. Not only doing, we, we, are, we are being recognized by various uh, organization of human resource department of the things. So definitely you are very good students, you are given a whatever we be, you are in the school level, once if you step into physics department, the physics department will be taking you to the next level. When you are going out as an institution, you will be a good human and also you will be a knowledgeable person. Both things is, both things is needed. Only knowledge will not give you anything. You should be a good human and you should respond, you, you have to respect the um, seniors and you have to follow the rules and regulations correctly. Then you should, the knowledge, when you combine all these things, your behavior and knowledge, both combined, definitely you will be in a good position after completing this. With these few words, once again, I'd like to congratulate and I welcome the Chief Guest for today's program. Thank you. Thank you for being a constant support, sir. Keep motivating us. Our science, our department, Science Club has been named as Triple Helix and has been registered under Vigyan Prasa Network of Science Club. Our department has been continuously organizing science activities, outreach activities under this club. We have been awarded Bronze Club status in 2019 and 2020. Mm. Okay. We have been awarded Bronze Club status in 2019 and 2020. For the year 2021, our club, Triple Helix, has been chosen under Commendable Club. We are the only one such club in Chennai, one out of six in Tamil Nadu, and one out of six in Tamil Nadu. Now I request our Triple Helix coordinator, Dr. V. Renganayake ma'am, to receive this Commendable Club certificate from our chief guest. Now I would like to 
call Dr. B. Ranganayake ma'am to report on the activities conducted by our physics department. I also request all the dignitaries to take the seat in the front row. Please, sir. privilege and pleasure to present you all the report of Triple Helix. Our Triple Helix Science Club is a registered club under Vidyan Prasar Network of Science Clubs, BST Government of India. The objective of the club is to stimulate spirit of curiosity, inquiry, innovation and creativity to supplement conventional education. Also to foster scientific temper and make science an enjoyable and interesting pursuit. We organize various activities. Asteroid Day. It is uh, actually every year we conduct International Asteroid Day online quiz. Uh, organized. This is organized in collaboration with Asteroid Foundation Luxembourg to spread awareness about asteroids and their impact on Earth. The to show the students the path through skill development initiatives, training on roof gardening is one such program which sow the seeds to ensure trainees to become future entrepreneurs. Popular science lectures are organized every year we organize this year. In association, this year, in association with Arivial Palagai, an initiative of Vigyan Prasa, DST Government of India, and Tamil Nadu Science and Technology Center, they celebrate, we celebrate Azadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav. Actually, these centers leverage this Mahotsav as an opportunity to celebrate science and technology achievements over 75 years. So, we conduct popular lectures, online quizzes, we also conduct these the activities to impart technical and ICT skill knowledge to improve sustainable development, to attain sustainable development goals among the students. To stimulate the spirit of curiosity, inquiry and innovation, programs are organized such as boot camps and innovation camps. As a part of STEM activity, students created e-posters and banners which you would have seen in our uh, uh, department sir, about the contribution of Indian scientists in national space travel. Every student felt passionate about our country and knowing about our scientists while doing this. In association with this, with the sponsorship from Ministry of Culture, Viba and IG Car Kalpakam, an essay competition was conducted. The title was The Role of Scientists in National Freedom Struggle. This was conducted in our college. Virtual Coursework Projects. These projects make the student understand, analyze the concepts through citizen science initiatives. We conduct these, pro um, these uh, projects, which are from California State University, Royal Society of uh, Chemistry London, all these projects we do every year under the banner of Triple Helix Science Club. Also, field activities to understand autumnal equinox, zero shadow day, all these make students understand and relate theoretical concepts with their practical learning experiences. Last but not the least, sir, every year our department being all women department, we celebrate women in STEM during Navratri. Actually our government is also doing under Posha Nabhyan project. This year an interactive program with gynecologists exclusively for girls students that was an eye opener addressing the students on various health issues faced by women. STEM needs to raise new questions, new possibilities, to regard old problems from new angle. It also requires creative imagination and it marks a real advance in science. With the constant support from, and motivation from the higher authorities, I am sure that we move forward in our endeavors, showing the students the path to progress towards higher education. Thank you, sir. Now, I request the dignitary to resume back their positions in the line. We feel extremely 
honor to have Dr. Sarit Kumar Das, B. Balakrishnan Institute Chair, Professor at IIT Madras. He received his bachelor's degree from the Department of Mechanical Engineering in 1984 and master's in 1987 from Jadavpur University, Kolkata. He completed his PhD in the area of heat transfer from Sambalpur University, Odisha in 1994 and joined University of Hamburg, Germany, where he did his post-doctoral research in the area of plate and liquid metal heat exchangers. He has published four books and more than 250 research papers. He is a recipient of the DAAD and Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship of Germany. He is a fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering and the National Academy of Sciences. He has been bestowed with several awards such as Indian Citation Award 2012 by Thomson Reuters and Professor K. M. Sita Ramu Award and Medal for Excellence in Research by Indian Society for Heat and Mass Transfer in the year 2006. He has also been awarded the Peabody Visiting Professorship at the Mechanical Engineering Department, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Cambridge, USA in 2011. He is the Editor-in-Chief of the International Journal of Nanoscale Transport and an Associate Editor of the journal Heat Transfer Engineering. He has also received IIT Madras Lifetime Achievement Research Award in June 2011. He was a former director and professor at IIT Ropa and he also held the position of Dean at IIT Madras. Now, I would like to welcome our principal sir to felicitate the chief guest. We are happy to say that this key campus is specially prepared by our student, Pitana, from earlier DLC table for the chief guest. Now, I would like to invite the chief guest to give a special talk. Welcome, sir. Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to be here speaking to all of you. And the reason why I am delighted, it's not just a formality to say, oh, I have come to your college, I must be very happy. It's not that. I'm happy for a different reason, I'll tell you. But I will also tell what was the need for such a uh, lecture on Professor G. M. Ramachandran. What is the need? One of the things is, of course, Saturday was his birth centenary, 100th year. And uh, incidentally, Yesterday, just yesterday, during lunch in our guest house, I met Professor Ramchandran's youngest son, Harishankar Ramchandran, and we talked for some time. So, uh, why it is important to bring out such a personality to all of you? I'll discuss that first, and then we'll come to his life. <clears throat> now, you know, somebody read out my CV, and... Uh, told something very great about me. But the thing is that, what is the difference, real difference between you and me? Experience. No. Not really. I will tell you a short story with which you will find out what is the difference and what is the reason why I have come here. The first thing is that, you know, uh, when I became a faculty member at IIT Madras, 27 years back. That's 27 years back, I was young, you know, just looking like a student, postdoctoral student probably, uh, like one of my students who is here. So we were walking to the canteen. You know, after taking class in the morning, you must have a coffee. So I, three, four of us, very young people, we were walking to the canteen. Suddenly, one senior professor caught hold of us and said, Hello, young man. 
Where are you going? Sir, we are going for a coffee. What are you doing? Are you doing research? Sir, we are trying something. How many research publications you have got? In those days, we just entered. Somebody said five, somebody said four. You know how many publications I have got? He said, no, sir. I have got 60 publications. He said, sir, you are great. And he said, you know, I have done this project. I have done that. And he kept on saying for five, ten minutes. We were looking for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to hear about what he has done? So I said, uh, I thought I have to stop this person. So suddenly I said, when he was saying all those things. I said, sir, I have got something which you don't have got. <laughs> he was stunned. He looked at me and said, what is that? Have you got a patent? I said, no, sir. Have you written a book? He said, no, sir. Now, what is that you have got, which I don't have got? I said, sir, I have got 30 more years. You don't have got it. <laughs> now, I asked you the question, I asked you the question, what is the difference between you and me? Now the table has turned. You can tell me, sir, we have got 40 more years. You don't have got it. What does it mean? It means a very simple thing. In fact, to that professor also. By saying that we have got 30 years, what I meant is I can overcome you. I can actually cross you, your achievements. And in fact, today when I look back, not only me, all the four or five people who were walking that time, they have crossed his achievements by a very large margin. Okay. So time is was on our side. But today, time is on your side. What I can become? So I cannot even become G. N. Ramachandran. Because I have to go in another five, six years. What I can become has been decided. Whatever I can achieve, you no, know, somebody read out. That's what I have achieved, or I can achieve a little bit more, maybe. But what you can achieve, for example, that girl or that boy, what you can achieve, it's not yet decided. You may be, you may become the head of an institution. You may lead an industry. You may become a Nobel laureate. Why not? I have made at least four Nobel laureates in my life, I have talked to them. And believe me, they are human beings like us. With little more focus, little more luck also. You will see from G. N. Ramachandra that it's not only focus, it's not only achievement, sometimes a bit of luck is also required. But the for, you know, main thing is, whether you get Nobel Prize or that, it really doesn't matter. If you are a known scientist, you are a known scientist. And you can become that. Each one of you. So, what all I am going to tell today, the worth of that is only these. If 10 years from now somebody walks to me and say, Sir, you gave a lecture in our college, I was inspired, and I take I have taken that to my heart and I have performed and I am famous today in my area. I think my coming to this college will be successful. So, all of you are capable of doing that. Do you think you are not capable because you are not in IIT, IISC, you are in Vaishnav College? That's not true. I became a professor of IIT. I became the dean of IIT. I became the director of IIT. I didn't study in IIT. No. I became a chair professor of MIT. I have never None of my degrees are abroad. Why? Because of one thing you must understand. You know, what is the difference between 100 meters run and marathon? When you see 100 meters run in you know, Commonwealth Games, you have seen. The photographers, where do they put their lenses, camera? At the beginning and at the end. Why at the beginning? Because you are going to run only for 10 seconds, maybe 9 and a half seconds. So if you miss 0.5 seconds at the beginning, at the start, you are gone. It's very difficult to catch up. 
right? But have you ever seen any photographer putting his lens to the beginning of a marathon? No. Because it really doesn't matter whether you start five minutes, because you are going to run for two and a half hours, three hours. So if you miss 0.5 seconds in the beginning, it really doesn't matter. What matters is do you have the stamina to run for two and a half hours? That's what is important. Life is not a hundred meter run. That you start very you know, fast and within six months everything is over. No, life is not like that. Life is a marathon. There are opportunities and opportunities. It all depends on whether you grab those opportunities or not. So, just like in a 100 meter run, start is important. People think that life is a 100 meter run. And that's why they give so much of importance to whether you are at IIT, whether you are at IIC, whether you are at this college, that college. Actually, life is a marathon and so it doesn't matter. You can start from any college. Okay? GNR started his career at Trichy, St. Joseph's College. Right? And so, you don't need to be, you know, start with a bank, but you can end with a bank. That is where the life's story stands. And that's the reason why don't feel yourself to be at a disadvantageous position. Being here at the GDB Vaishnava College, you have got enough opportunity, but you must have a dream to be successful. And what that dream is? What is a dream? A dream is something which you don't see in sleep. Dream is something which doesn't allow you to sleep. Who said that? <laughs> Abdul Kalam. So that's what Abdul Kalam didn't study in you know, IIT, IIS, anywhere. He studied in our MIT only here, from Bay, right? And went to build this nation. So, my dear friends, there is enough possibility in you. Use that possibility to go to the top. And each one of you have got, each one of you is capable of going to the top. That's what I feel. You must have that, that fire in you. what is called the fire in the belly. If you have it, you can go to it. Now having said that, let's slowly come to the topic. When I was a visiting professor at uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, I found a very interesting thing that in front of their uh, mathematics department, they put some posters some 20 top mathematical inventions of uh, the humanity. I was surprised to see that out of the 20, among the first five, not 20, 25, I think, among the first five, three were from India. Three. Invention of zero, Solution of quadratic equations okay. and one more. I, I don't remember. So, three out of five among the first. I was delighted that that was from India. But I was also sad that from the next 20, there is not one from India. Okay. So, really, this country was great in science and technology in ancient times. You know, even, even what is written in the Vedas about consciousness. Indian philosophy always said consciousness is different from mind. Mind is not consciousness. Mind can be ill. You have mental illness. You don't have consciousness illness. Now, Western philosophy always said, no, no, no. Every consciousness also comes from only the brains, new, neurons, etc. Only in recent times they have started saying, no, this consciousness is not mind. In fact, in YouTube you go, you find some lectures by Roger Penrose, who got a Nobel Prize a couple of years back. He said that consciousness is not computation. Mind is computation. You, you compute which is good, which is bad. But consciousness is not computation. It is something else. So, 
So we were great in science 4,000 years back, 3,000 years back. Unfortunately, there was a dark period in between. Because the invaders came to this country and they were not interested in developing your science and technology. They just fooled. Whether it is the medieval invaders or it is the British invaders, nobody was interested in developing your science and technology. They were only interested in taking away the resources from this country. And so there was a very, very dark time. But you know, in 1857, when first, uh, you know, 1856, when there was first war of independence against the British, the, which they call Sipoy Mutiny. After that, they realized that you cannot rule a country, huge country like India, through a company, East India Company. So Britain took directly, in the name of the Queen, they took directly the ruling uh, you know, responsibilities of India. Now, for that, they had to build a narrative. They had to build a history. They had to tell the history in such a way which helps them. Now, you must be thinking why I am telling all these for G and Ramachandran. Because, see, if you do not put a person in perspective, you do not understand him. Well, he was a brilliant scientist and all that. But what was the era? What was the time? If you don't understand, you won't understand. So that's why I'm telling this, that the British came and British built a narrative. The narrative was something like, you see in your history books even today, there were great Mughals. Can you tell anyone, can you tell the name of five Mughal emperors? Right. Right. Now, tell the name of five Chola kings. Why can't you tell? Now, I'll tell you. You can't tell me. And you, being South Indian, you cannot tell. Think of the North. They won't be able to tell even one. You can at least tell Raja Raja Chola. They won't be able to tell even that. Now, these great Mughals, Ruled for how many years? From 1526, Babar came. Aurangzeb died at 1709. 183 years. That's it. Within 183 years, you remember everybody, five, six people. Cholas ruled from 3rd century BC to 1279. You are interested in Chola only when Pandian Selvam comes. Right? But but otherwise, otherwise, now this is the reason why you have to remember people. See, so 1500 years they ruled and they didn't rule only southern part of India. You know, their influence was up to Far East. You know, from, from Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, everything was within them for 1500 years and you cannot name five of them. Whereas for 120 years, 80 years, the, the you know, Mughals ruled and you remember all of them. Why? Because British taught you like that. The reason is, why British taught? Because they came from outside. They invaded India. So British built a narrative that you were always invaded by India, uh, by outsiders. So that we are also ruling you, there is nothing wrong. You are like that only. So the British made the history of Delhi as the history of India. But history of Delhi is very... Actually, the influence of Mughals around Delhi was in a very narrow region. And the people who opposed them, they made them almost like dacoits. Shivaji was called a bandit. So this is what the British built up. And they started universities. 1857, they started Madras University, Calcutta University, Bombay University, etc. And in that university, what they wanted? They wanted to create only clerks. They never wanted to create scientists. Because 
if there is free thinking, the first thing that people will ask is independence. That they don't want. So, they, you know, the British made the course, curriculum, everything in such a way that the science and technology does not propagate. But there were Indians who were brave, who defied the British. And one of them was Sar Ashutosh Mukhopadhyay of Calcutta University. He was the Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University twice, and in between he was the judge of the High Court of Calcutta. That time Supreme Court was Calcutta only. So he was a judge. But his basic degree was in mathematics. He was the father of you know, Shama Prashad Mukhopadhyay. So he is the person who started science movement in India. S.N. Bose, Meghnath Saha, all these people developed during his vice chancellor's team. He started the science college of Calcutta, where from all these scientists emerged. And for that, he asked British money to start science college. And the British refused. Because they said, we don't want science. Science will be in London. Why science should be in Calcutta? And Sir Ashutosh Mukhopadhyay built up you know, Calcutta University, taking people from, it's not only Bengal and Calcutta. He went all around India, collected talents. He came to Madras. And for two departments, he took two very young people. And there was opposition in Calcutta. Well, who are these people unknown? You know, we have got so many known people. Why have you brought them? So he brought for physics department, a very young man called C.V. Raman. And for philosophy department, another very young man called Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan. Look at the person's vision. He could identify in those young people the potential. And the science movement started in that science college. When British refused money, he asked the Indian people who had money and two people. One is uh, Professor Palit and the other one was Raj Bihari Ghosh. In those days, they, you know, some, something like 5 lakhs, 6 lakhs rupees and the land for that uh, science college they gave. Now, 5 lakhs then, if you compute today, it will come to something like 50 to 100 crore rupees. They donated and with that, it was started. And one after another person of science emerged from there. So, it is not, you know, you will hear, you know, our education, new science started in India because of the British. It's not. It started in spite of the British. It's not because of the British. In fact, uh, uh, you know, if Jesse Bose, who was probably the first scientist of the modern era in India, he was given a salary different from the you know, British professors, so for two years, he did not take a salary. He had lots of loan of his father, yet he didn't, he refused to take salary and somehow managed his family because those were the people who had the backbone. They had a dream for science. In fact, Jesse Bose could have got Nobel Prize because he is the, now IEEE has accepted that he is the real inventor of microwave, not Markovi. They have accepted. So these were C. V. Raman, you know, in Indian Association for Cultivation of Science in, in Calcutta. That is where he did his work. So this is the scenario which was set in. In those days, at least eight to ten people of India were so capable that any one of them could have got Nobel Prize. Not just C. V. Raman. There was Krishnan, his student, K. S. Krishnan. There was UN uh, Brahmachari. Okay. There was a, a not one, you, you can say a stream of people who were there. And that was because they fought against British, they wanted to do their things, and Indians built up. This is the stage in which appeared this man called G. N. Ramachandra. His father was in Ernakulam, his father was a professor of mathematics. But, uh, you know, like every father, even today, 
thing, you know, my biology. Studying mathematics, you will get nothing. You study rather physics. So, G. N. Ramachandran in schools also always used to get in mathematics hundred out of hundred. Even in the, you know, in, uh, what the, in those days called intermediate examination, he got hundred out of hundred, and he became in Madras presidency. Madras presidency that time means the whole of South India you can tell. In that Madras presidency, G. N. Ramachandran came out top, number one. And uh, he, after intermediate, you have to take B.Sc. Now B.Sc, uh, his father said, no, 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 forget mathematics. What you will do with mathematics? You rather go and do something so that you get a job. That's what happened to Ramanujan. Even, uh, you know, Srinivasan Ramanujan, what, what did he do? He took a job in Port Trust of Madras. Right? So similarly, his father said, you know, you will get a government job, which is a great thing. So you go. So G. M. Ramachandran went to Trichy, St. Joseph's College, right? and uh, studied physics. And even in, again in B.Sc. Physics Honours, he was topper, university topper. Because in that time, there was only one university, University of Madras. Okay. There was IISc Bangalore, but IISc Bangalore, uh, of course, it was not called IISc, it was called the Tata Institute. They didn't have the uh, power of distributing degrees. Actually, even in IISc, if you study, the degree was given by Madras University, University of Madras. And I am very proud that today I am a member of the syndicate of Madras University. It's a, it's a great honor for me. So, G. N. Ramachandran, G. N. Ramachandran, after passing, uh, he wanted to go for higher study, but his father wanted him to get a job, as uh, you know, everybody today also. It is so. So, his father said, you go to Delhi and appear the Railway Engineering Services Examination. Then you will get a job. G. M. Ramachandran went to Delhi and purposefully wrote a bad exam so that he doesn't get it. And he didn't get it. Then he came back and said, see, I didn't get it, so I want to go for higher study. So his father was frustrated and said, okay, go to IASC and at least read electrical engineering, then you will get a job in future. What you will do with physics? He said, okay, fine. So, he went and got admission in uh, IIC Bangalore. That time, the director of IIC Bangalore was Raman, C.V. Raman. C.V. Raman was a very, completely failure director. He was a great scientist, but as a director, he was failure. Because, he, see, as a Principal, for example, what is your area, sir? Computer science. Computer science. Now, if he only pattern, you know, patronizes the computer science department and doesn't look at other departments, he will be a bad principal. Now, Raman used to do only that. He was only busy with his research. Money he was giving only to physics department, not to other departments who are shouting. So he was not a very successful director. A great scientist, of course. So what happened? Uh, G. N. Ramachandran. He didn't have an uh, intention to study electrical engineering, only he was pushed to engineering, like today. All fathers, you know, they push to engineering. So he was also pushed. He started visiting Raman's lab. And in a couple of days, Raman realized the potential of this person. It's a brilliant guy. He said, would you work with me? He said, yes. So he called the electrical engineering head, Raman and said, you transfer him to physics department. Now, what will electrical engineering know, sir? He has come to our department, why would you take him and all that? So two, three times he requested. The head didn't agree. Then he was the director. He wrote an order straight away. And what is interesting, what he said? He said, I am transferring. He called the head of the department and said, I am transferring him from electrical engineering department to physics department because he is too brilliant to be an electrical engineer. That's what Raman said. He is too brilliant to be an electrical engineer. And so he started and he, he started working under uh, Raman. In those days, uh, MSc was basically a thesis. Very little coursework, but a thesis. And he wrote the thesis and thesis, of course, Madras University, under Madras University. Thesis went to uh, K.S. Krishnan. 
the other very giant of he, that time Krishnan was in Allahabad. He was a professor of University of Allahabad. Krishnan was the person who actually did experiments of Raman. And it's another sad story that I, I call him Karan of uh, Indian science. Because, you know, you remember Mahabharata's Karan. Uh, and, and one of the features is he didn't get his due. That is fine. But one of the reasons for his failure was his guru himself. Parashuram was his guru who gave a curse that at a time when you need all these uh, teachings, you will forget. Uh, something like that, Raman never recognized the contribution of uh, K.S. Krishna in his discovery. Although the Raman spectrum was first seen not by Raman, but by K.S. Krishna. Anyway, so Krishna was a great fellow, I mean, one of the greatest scientists uh, India has produced. So Ramachandran's thesis went to, as an examiner, to K.S. Krishnan. And K.S. Krishnan's report was, this MSc thesis deserves two PhDs. That's what Krishnan wrote. Then, of course, he started, and please understand, his this work and his PhD, which was also under Raman. After that, he did PhD. Only in three years, he's completed PhD. And his PhD examiner was another great film, Rayleigh. You know, this Rayleigh scattering, etc. that you hear. Rayleigh was the examiner of G. N. Ramachandran for his PhD thesis. And entire PhD and MSc, G. N. Ramachandran didn't have a single publication with Raman. What does it mean? It means it was done by himself, not by Raman. In fact, he didn't get a PhD. In those days, there were two types of degrees in Madras University. One was called PhD, one was called DSC. PhD is the usual one where there is a guide who will decide, you know, your topic, etc., etc. DSC was there will be only a guide who will provide you the lab. Rest is yours. So, G. N. Ramachandran did a DSC where there was virtually no contribution of Brahman. He did it himself. That's why all the publications are his publications. After getting the DSC, he got uh, what is called 1951 uh, uh, scholarship. This was post-war scholarship for mobility of scientists. He got it and he went to Cambridge, University of Cambridge. And that time the head of the Cambridge, uh, in Cambridge one of the major laboratories was the Cavendish Laboratory. And the Cavendish Laboratory's head was uh, Lawrence Brack. You know, the X-ray diffraction was invented by Father Bragg and Son Bragg, you know, both of them. And uh, Son Bragg, when he got a Nobel Prize, what was his age? 23. He got a Nobel Prize. Uh, people say, you know, more contribution was from him. So that Lawrence Bragg was the head of that one, uh, Cavendish Laboratory. And he went there. Actually, G. M. Ramachandran wanted to work with Bragg. But Bragg gave him to somebody else. And so what he worked on photoelasticity. He was not very happy. He wanted to do something better than that. But he learned crystallography very well. And he got another doctorate. In two years. In three years he got DSC at Madras. In two years he got PhD at Cambridge. So when he came back, he had two PhDs. And all this you know, working experience with all these luminaries. So, at IISC, he was taken as an assistant professor, young man. Now, he, that time was very nice for him. There were many young professors like Ramashesha, etc., etc. They joined and they had a wonderful time and all that. Probably that was the you know, indication of, you know, whenever there is too much of calm, you think that a storm is coming. And so the storm was coming. Now, what happened at that time, there was a great visionary who was the Vice Chancellor of University of Madras. His name is Lakshman Swami Mudaliya. And he did many things. He had the real vision. And he wanted to convert that. Just like Sir Ashutosh in Calcutta University, Mudaliya was in Madras University. And he wanted to start a theory, uh, experimental physics department. Now, in India, 
at that point of time, who was the greatest experimental physicist, C. V. Raman. So he invited C. V. Raman to come here and start the Madras University Department of Experimental Physics. Raman said, by that time Raman left uh, uh, the IISC and he started his own institute, which is known as Raman Institute. Now, he said, I have started my own university. I can't come, but I will give you someone who is as good as me, if not better. And he recommended G. N. Ramachandra. Now, please understand, I mean, those who know a little bit about Raman uh, knows that Raman will never be so lavish in praise for someone unless he is really top class, a genius. And that is how at the age of just 29, G. N. Ramachandran came to University of Madras as a full professor at the age of 29. And he started working. Now, you know, uh, scientists are different breed of people. Not all of them are very nice people. That is, that can be told about Raman also and many others. G. M. Ramachandran was moody. In the morning, you know, the, his PhD student themselves, they will come and they will ask the secretary, how is his mood today? Depending on they will meet or don't meet. He was very moody, but at the same time, very passionate towards research. Now, that's the time one one of the greatest crystallographers of the world from UK visited Madras. His name was J.D. Bernal. J.D. Bernal, uh, he visited in 1952 and he suggested that G.N. Ramachandran take some collagen, which is a protein, you know, our muscles, etc. Everything is made of collagen. Collagen for study because the structure of collagen, real structure of collagen was not known till that time. So, 1952, he started looking at collagen. And that was an exciting time because that was the time when at King's College, London and Cambridge, there was a fight going on to find out the DNA structure. That is another story, very amazing story. Crick and Watson, there, Vis a vis in King's College, there was there was a lady, you know the name? Rosalind Flankley. Just Google it and find out. She was deprived by Crick and Watson. Actually, they stole her results and really got to the structure. She was, I mean, I have recently written an article on her. It's a very touching story. She died at the age of uh, 37 in cancer. But the, almost the whole credit of finding out the structure of DNA goes to her. But she was not even named. Actually, Crick and Watson did tremendous injustice to Rosalind Franklin. Anyway, so that was the time that fight was going on. When G. N. Ramachandran and he had one of his postdoctoral scholars, Gopinath Kartha. So these two people started at Madras University, started working on uh, you know, uh, these things, on structure of collagen. Now, even getting collagen was difficult, pure collagen. So the person who helped him is another giant of Indian science, Professor Nayaduma. He was the director of CLRI. Okay. And in CLRI, you know, Central Leather Research Institute, they got those collagens from Australia, the tail of, from the tail of kangaroos. And G. N. Ramachandran started working in them. And within two years, right, in, in the year 55, 56, they got a structure uh, of collagen and he proposed the structure was a triple helical structure. So that is where triple helix comes. Your club's name is triple helix. It is three helix. But very unfortunately, uh, he was opposed by Francis Crick. Crick who got DNA. Uh, Crick said, no, his structure is wrong. Crick 
proposed a double helical structure for uh, Kulani. And uh, there was a fight. Unfortunately, the journal Nature took quick sight in the sense that when two people compete, if I send a paper to the journal, it should not be shown to my competitor. But Nature did exactly that. Ramachandran sent paper, it was given for comment to Crick. And his paper was delayed for months. And Crick wrote a paper which was immediately published. That was Crick's model. And Crick objected that Ramachandran has shown two hydrogens too close, it cannot be there like that. And there was a big fight. And that's why they denied. Later on it was find out, Crick was absolutely wrong. And Ramachandran was absolutely correct. But this, because of this, he didn't get recognition, he was put under pressure, you know, because they were also helping, you know, we have a Cambridge University person who got a, a he didn't get Nobel Prize till then, but he got the DNA structure and all that. He must be correct. How can a dark man in a colony of U UK, sitting in a city like Madras, beat Francis Crick? That was the logic. And that is how he was put down. That was very unfortunate, although he was absolutely on top. That created pressure on him. And he started suffering from schizophrenia. He got mental problems. So much of pressure, so much of frustration because these things were not being accepted. But then he responded in a unique way because you know, Francis Crick said that this structure cannot be there theoretically. He found out in the meantime he left Madras because Ramaswamy uh, Lakshman Swami Mudalliar retired and the next vice chancellor like you know many of the administrator he thought everybody is equal what is great about Ramachandran so he took away all the you know special facilities for research which was given to them could you even to him and so he was very angry it is said that he threw away his chair from second floor of the building and resigned and when he resigned it seems the Madras University Vice Chancellor said if one monkey goes another will come. Sorry, you tell this to Ramachandran. Ramachandran went to Chicago and uh, he worked on another thing which is you know we call it CAT scan. The scan is told CAT scan. We do you know uh, scan of the body. That CAT name was given by Ramachandran. Computerized adapted tomography. That is given by uh, Ramachandra. So he worked on CAT scan at Chicago. Then he came back and joined IISC once again. So he used to say that my life is a tale of two cities, Chennai and Bangalore. So it was between them. He went back to Bangalore. He worked there and his you know, schizophrenia increased. But even with that, he started you know, doing wonderful things. And one of them with some of his he made a plot of what all, what all structures in you know biology, the long chain molecules are possible. Not just to respond to you know, our Francis Crick. Francis Crick said this structure is not possible. He made a plot of all the structures which are possible, which is called Ramachandran plot. And in fact, later on in 1968, uh, Linus Pauling came to. Madras for a conference which was organized by Ramachandra only. And Linus Pauling, you know, he got Nobel Prize twice. Once for chemistry, one for, uh, once for, or one for chemistry or physics? Chemistry only. Yeah. The, and once for peace. Anyway, Pauling came to Madras and in Madras he said that, well, Ramachandra was absolutely correct. He deserved a Nobel Prize. And my only sadness is that when I look at his work, I also was working. I feel sad that I could not get that idea, this triple helix idea. So that is what was, Linus Pauling is saying that Ramachandran is so great that his idea he did get. So, after that, 
you know, he shifted to CCMB, you know, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in, in Hyderabad. There also he didn't like, because, see, he was a genius. You would not expect him to follow usual rules. And we always, you know, bureaucratic, you say, you write this thing, you write 100 applications, this, that. He will say, nonsense, I don't want to waste my time. So, he was not able to fit anywhere. He went to Hyderabad from there. At that time, his son, his son is a now professor at Harvard. His daughter is also a professor in, I think, Columbia or somewhere. So, they were abroad. His only youngest son, Hari, Hari Shankar Ramachandran, he was in uh, Ahmedabad in a Plasma Research Institute. So he took Ramachandran and his wife to Ahmedabad. But Ahmedabad, Ramachandran was very unhappy. He doesn't know anybody there. No scientific circle. How such a man can survive without that? So he's, in the meantime, his wife passed away in Ahmedabad. So he was alone. So he said, you send me back. So Hari said, you know, how can you... I, all this I came to know because Hari is my you know, colleague at IIT Madras. He is a professor of... Uh, uh, electrical engineering. In fact, yesterday itself I met him during lunch. So, Hari said, uh, well, how can you go back alone? He said, you put, uh, keep some nurse, I will do. Because by that time, he developed another thing. He developed Parkinson's disease. Because of the, you know, the for psychiatric uh, treatment, those drugs have got side effects. And because of that, he started getting, he said, uh, Hari told me it was pathetic to see. He was crying that he cannot write person of his, his stature, if he cannot write, cannot express his ideas. But he became fellow of Royal Society of UK, which is a great honor, uh, I think in 57. And then he became, also he got the, the highest award of the uh, World Crystallographic Conference, uh, award, uh, award and so on. But definitely, he was nominated for a Nobel Prize, which he didn't get, which is very unfortunate. In fact, uh, after he died, uh, Hindu wrote an article, in Hindu, Dr. Balasubramanian wrote a paper, uh, a, a, an article in which he said, the prize that missed the master, which is true, actually, he did not miss the prize, the prize missed him. Just like we say, the Nobel Peace Prize missed Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi didn't mean, because, you know, Mahatma Gandhi is known for peace for generations, will be known for hundred, as long as human being is there. The Nobel Prize didn't come to him, it's a pity for Nobel Prize, not for Mahatma Gandhi. And I feel the same thing for G.N. Ramachandran, that he didn't get a Nobel Prize, it, it's a pity for Nobel, you know, him. So when he came back to Madras, he was in this DHS, you know, voluntary health services there, in a room with two nurses. And uh, Hari wanted to come back to IIT Madras. He gave interview. He was coming back next month. I think May he was about to join. But in early April, Ramachandran died. So this was the story of a man. Now can you understand? Staying in this country with this much of adversaries, what is the quality of what these people produce? Because the ambience was not there. Today the ambience for doing science and technology is thousand times better than that. For you, for me, for everyone. So the question is, why should not we produce characters like G and Ramachandran? We should. We did not produce because too long we looked at what the foreigners are saying. Just like our history. You see, it is not sad that British wrote that history. It is sad that after 75 years also, we are following that history. We are still, you know, even today people do not know the Chola kings, but they know the Mughal kings. The sadness is there. The sadness is not. British is a ruling uh, power. They will do whatever suits them. Why we are not able to you know, do what suits us? Because even today, we look for recognition at, uh, you know, at the West. Believe me, I don't want to, uh, it's, it's not beating my own drum. When I completed my chair professorship at MIT, they offered me to stay back. That, and I said, no, this, 
I didn't take even one second to reject that one. A head of the department of uh, mechanical engineering at MIT told me, I am seeing for the first time one person who is rejecting uh, a permanent position, a uh, professor's position at MIT. I said, yeah. Many things you will see first time in your life. Doesn't matter what is important for me, what I do for India. And so, this is what is the situation today. Today, we are much more self-confident. And I do believe, I am not a negative person. I do believe that this country will do great things in science and technology. And please understand, only technology cannot go. Unless there is fundamental science, technology has got no value. Because you will not innovate anything. What you will do, you will just copy others. You will become another, you know, Taiwan. You will become another China. You will not become another America or UK or Japan. Even. Everywhere, wherever they, or Germany, the countries which have progressed always have done very well in fundamental sciences. There has to be there. And who can do that? Only people like you. It's not difficult if you have a dream. And I tell it to my students, my scholars. Dream is what? Come to research. Come to higher education. Dedication means what? Even when I tell my student, even when you are in toilet, you should think of the problem that you are trying to solve. If you have got that kind of dedication. And that kind of dedication is not difficult. You get, take your work, take it to your heart, start reading, start doing things. You will see automatically you will get absorbed. Even today, my postdoctoral scholar, she also did PhD with me, Dr. Nithya. Uh, you ask her, she sends message to me 12 o'clock at night. And within how many minutes you get her response? Yes. I do that. And it's not only me, there are many. It's, it's not that you know, I am great, so I am doing this. There are many very passionate Indians who are doing this kind of you know, research, innovation, basic sciences, applied sciences, and that is what is possible. So if you look at this personality, you look at his difficulties, you look at his adversaries, even then he was successful. Even then, after 100 years, we remember him. He has really, you know, blown away the world and not won. Even later on, Francis Crick said he deserved a Nobel Prize. Not just Linus Pauli. So, that is what was G. N. Ramachandran. But remembering him is not just sitting here and, you know, listening to a lecture from Dr. Das and then to it. My dear friends, as I said, you are at the beginning of a marathon run. You have the stamina. You have the capability. The question is whether you have the dream. Whether you would like to go to the top. As I said, I don't have time, but you have time. I could not go much beyond what I expected. But you can go much beyond that. There can be Ramachandrans, there can be C.V. Ramans, there can be, there can be greatest of the scientists and engineers of the future sitting in these rooms. Please, do not waste your life. Do not waste your career. When I look at my career, my life, I feel sad. I feel that I could have done much more. You should not repent like that. Yes, little bit I have done for which I am happy, but the potential in you can put Tamil Nadu, your institution and your country to the map of the scientific world. And if you have that passion, if you have that zeal, you can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you for such an enlightening lecture, sir. We are really inspired by the passion.
passion of G. L. Ramachandran to work with her, in spite of the struggles he faced in publishing the structure of collagen. And it's really sad that the Nobel Prize missed G. N. R. To commemorate Asadika Amrit Mahotsav, our Department of Physics conducted essay writing competition for students in association with Arivir Sangam, Tamil Nadu chapter of Viva, sponsored by Ministry of Culture, Government of India, Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kalpakam, to celebrate contribution of freedom fighters and nationalist scientist, Sir C. V. Raman. Ministry of Culture and Viva have sponsored cash prize for this competition. Students who secured first prize will be invited to a mega event at IG Car Kalpakam. Around 60 students wrote essay on the role of Indian scientists in national freedom struggle from both day and evening college. These students brought out the contribution and dedication of our country's scientists in building science and technology of our country. Struggles they underwent in starting research institutions for our country and various sacrifices they have done for our country to progress. Our heartfelt pranam to all these scientific science soldiers who dedicated their lives for science. Now, I request our chief guest and principal to present the certificates and cash prizes to the prize winners. From Day College, first prize, cash prize of rupees 3000 is awarded to young Bhuvaneshwari from third year BSC Botany. Second prize, cash prize of rupees 2000 is awarded to R. Sweta from second year BSC today. Third prize, cash prize of rupees 1000 is awarded to K. Sandhya from second year BSC chemistry. From Evening College, first prize cash prize of rupees 3000 is awarded to Netra Sri from third year biochemistry. Second prize cash prize of rupees 2000 is awarded to Sandhya Young from second year BSc biotechnology. Third prize, cash prize of rupees 1000 is awarded to Bharat Raj P from first year BSc PCA. We would like to appreciate the student volunteers who made this essay competition a successful one. Now I request the chief guest to present certificates to them. John Milton from BSc Physics third year and Boa from third year BSc physics. Bhuvan from third year BSc physics. As a part of STEM activity, our physics department students created e-posters and banners above contribution of Indian scientists in national freedom struggle. The department exhibited these posters in the STEM lab and physics lab corridor as a walk-in exhibition during the period August month of this year, students and teachers paid their tribute to our nation's lab on these artifacts connected to our country. As an appreciation, we would like to present certificate to those students. Now I invite the chief guest and principal sir to distribute the certificate. Prasanna A of third year has done this banner on Abhinav Sarasar. Yes, of third year on history behind the genesis of TIFR. <laughs> Abhijit R of third year, genesis of IITM.
Amit Varshini, we are of third year on a sea voyage that changed India, history of IISC. Rishika S. of third year on the immortal gem of our country, Acharya Sir, J.C. Bose. Odeya Kumar, R.A. of third year, on why East India Company wanted to survey in India. <laughs> Deepika T of third year on Acharya Prafulla Chandra Ray, freedom fighter and chemist. <laughs> Kirtana AK of third year on Swami Vivekananda and Nikola Tesla Story of how did Venata inspired the Western world. <laughs> Sangeeta C of second year on the Amsen women feminist in India, Dr. Mutulakshmi Reddy. <laughs> Munish Kumar B, Ganesh B, Kumar B of second year have done a huge banner titled Take a picture with our Indian scientists. You might have seen that banner while entering the auditorium. Giflin Cheryl C of second year and Danusha B of second year have done their banner on Viva Chaudhary. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the Department of Physics, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest, Dr. Sarit Kumar Das, for accepting our invitation and being with us. Thank you, sir. Our sincere thanks to our principal, sir, for providing constant support and encouraging us. I would like to express my gratitude to Vigyan Bharati, RBF Sangam, Ministry of Culture, and IG Car for organizing this event and sponsoring the essay writing competition. A special thanks to all the teaching and non-teaching staff for making this event a great success. A wide round of applause and thanks to all the students. Once again, I would like to thank each and everyone for making this event a memorable one. Thank you everyone.